2012 and 12 spring football camp for BYU is winding down. Saturday was the scrimmage. It's usually a spring football game this year because of a lot of injuries. The BYU football team kind of toned it down to just a scrimmage here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. I'm Jared Lloyd, sports editor for the Daily Herald and CougarBlue.com. Here with Jason Franchuk, BYU football columnist for the Daily Herald. Jason, what did you take from today's scrimmage? It's been interesting, Jared, to be to a bunch of these now, and this was the most toned down one. I mean, we're talking our man Richard Teasdale was even allowed to film the whole thing. I think we can safely say that the starters not playing really had a big aspect to do with that. But they're, they're decent, you know? I mean, they've got some young quarterbacks that I think everybody, it's a good crowd today, about 5,000 people we'd estimate, and they've got some young guys that you gotta be excited about. I kinda call this the futures game. You know, you're seeing some guys that two, three years down the road after missions, after some seniors and juniors graduate, they're gonna make a difference. But I think they're in a good spot to go in the off season. Bronco Mendenhall had to play it safe this year. They've just lost too many guys to surgeries and other things. This is a year-to-year -year thing with him. I would rather, if I had the ideal, I'd rather be like a year ago where we had enough healthy players to then divide the team up, add a little bit more intrigue, um, have two main quarterbacks that are going against each other, you know, one versus two, balance the team out, and we ended up with an overtime game and a coach being carried off the field and just uh, kind of a nice culmination. This was more workmanlike, different purpose, but it, it was fitting in relation to where our team currently is at this point. You know, this game was really dominated. I mean, the scrimmage was really dominated by the defense. Uh, they did skeleton drills for the first 20 minutes, even with the advantages that the offense has in the skelly. Uh, they weren't able to get in the end zone. And then once they got into the team drills, I think the longest play that counted was an 11-yard gain. So really, the defense really came out and showed, well, what did they show you? Was it more just the fact that the offense was inexperienced, or was it the defense actually stepping up and playing well? Yeah, the defense stepped up and played well. They had a couple plays there. There should have been a touchdown along the right end, right sideline there. That was just an overthrow. They could have had a pick six going in, but you know, it, spring games are always weird. It's just, it, it's like Mark Weber told me, you don't win any games in the spring, you know? And I think what you look for is athleticism. You want to see, can guys play? You want to see, are they coachable? Can they coach them in between plays? and, and and get into better situations. And I, I think they're a group that has shown they can do some things. Okay, last thing, Broncos played this down, Jason, over, over spring. He says, since most of the guys are gonna be back, these aren't season-ending, career-ending ending type injuries. He says, most of the guys are gonna be back. So he downplays the impact that this might have, this kind of toned down spring might have when they get to fall. Do you think that's accurate or is there some concern there just because so many guys haven't gotten any reps? Well, I think the biggest concern is, I mean, you've got guys like Cal Van Noy that are around the team still. He didn't play in spring, but he's around the team really. But the biggest aspect is they're not on the field. Kyle can't be on the field. Guys like him, Riley, it, Riley didn't play today, you know, so he's on the sideline, but he's not able to just be in the game and kind of surround himself with it. But I think the bigger deal right now is getting those guys healthy. You look at that offensive line, Jared, they've got to get healthy. they got to get in better shape. Mark Weber also told me, you know, they've got a bunch of guys that are close to being ready as opposed to they're not waiting for fall for that to happen. So next week, you know, th this is another odd thing, Jared. They've got a week left of practice. they got Monday, Wednesday, Friday, as you'll talk about. But... Uh, coaches have told me they're going to work on no huddle offense, tempo offense, just trying to put themselves in a good situation. I think the biggest thing, Jared, is off-season conditioning. This is, they call it kind of voluntary. It's not voluntary. you got to be there. But it is a self-motivation thing. They can't have coaches on them every day. I think coaches kind of find out, but they've got to be in a situation where they're getting themselves better and getting themselves ready for fall camp. I think that's an even bigger deal than spring football these days. All right, so we're still a few months away before fall rolls around, but uh, kind of fun to come out and watch some football here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium for the spring for the spring skim scrimmage. We'll be here at uh, practice for the next couple of days next week, and then we'll wait to see how BYU does when they when the fall rolls around. 23 weeks, I heard, until the until first kickoff. But off. who's counting, right? Who's All counting? those football fans. <laughs>